This is a Viper V10 from 1996. It is a crate motor with zero miles. And for the first time in 27 years, we're gonna open it up. Today's video is gonna be about the intake manifold. I'm gonna show you all the steps needed to remove it and all the little weird parts and tools you may need along the way. If you're new to the channel and you're wondering why I have this engine, it's going in my 1969 Plymouth Barracuda. All the parts have been collected, all the fab work done. It's finally time to dig into this beast of an engine. It's 27 years old, so all the rubber and the gaskets you know, they're, they're pretty aged. So I'm gonna go ahead and tear it down to a short block. Process is doing that now. Uh, but thankfully, we've got 27 years of experience with these engines. So I actually made a video already about some of the major problems with them, what you need to do to correct them. I'm gonna be doing all that before I put this into the 69 Barracuda. And of course, I'm gonna make it go fast because that's just what we do. Let's get back to the intake. Now, before you start this job, you're gonna need to go buy some of these. If you already have them, kudos to you. I had no idea what the heck these were. But these are external Torx fit sockets. As you can see here, they're that star pattern. Uh, this is pretty much every single intake manifold bolt. You don't really need the smaller guys, but you do need the E10, and it has to be in a quarter inch drive. Trust me, the 3 8 isn't gonna work. So if you have that in 3 8 forget about it. Go buy the quarter inch drive. Now, before you even open up this package, there's a few other things you gotta do to the intake manifold in preparation for its actual removal. Obviously, you gotta take off some of the things like the PCV, which is super easy, no big deal. Uh, but all the little sensors, uh, like your throttle position sensor, it's just a clip, pop it up, pulls it out. This is the manifold air pressure. Uh, this one actually broke on the plastic piece, so I'm gonna be careful with that. But you just gotta pull this out here. And you also have to pull out the air idle control valve, which is this little guy right here. So it's, you could either unbolt it if you wanted to, I'm gonna leave it in. I'm just gonna pull the sensor cable. And of course, obviously, if this is in your car right now and you're doing this, you're gonna have to disconnect your throttle cables or the mechanism if you've got a Gen 2 that connects them both together. Just gotta make sure that it's not still connected to the car. Now, the next thing we're gonna tackle is the fuel system. Obviously, this is not in a car and it's actually never been run, so it's not charged with fuel. But if you're working on this in your car, just note that your supply line for your fuel is actually right here. It's this guy. This uh, Right now, I've got it sitting right here. But of course, this goes to your car, which is down rather to your tank. So before you start looking to disconnect this, you're going to need to make sure that your rails have been bled off. This is the relief valve right here. So you can bleed off the pressure. Uh, do that obviously first. You don't want to try to take that off without bleeding pressure. And uh, then you can proceed with pulling all of these as well once you've got that main line disconnected. One of the really cool things about this intake manifold is, you know, I mentioned this is really the only supply line you have to the manifold. So obviously you can see the fuel rail here it goes along the passenger side. I was curious to how it transferred to the driver's side. If you're looking at the intake runners, they're all the same except for one, which is this guy. This guy is actually raised on the top. This right here is the fuel transfer, which brings the fuel to the driver's side and then feeds it to the rest of the injectors. You can kind of see that here, if I move this cable. Here's the fuel rail on the driver's side receiving from the passenger. Now in the front here, there are some vacuum lines you can kind of see it coming here, goes underneath behind the alternator. Now, this is a crate motor, so it's just disconnected anyways. As you can see, there's, there's nothing on it. So I'm not worried about that, but I would suggest removing the vacuum lines from the throttle bodies before you proceed with unbolt to the manifold. All right, now that everything is disconnected, it's time to open up this bad boy and break in these new sockets. Now, the intake manifold bolts on this are a little hard to see, but shine some light. You can see it's right in there. It's that weird star thing. Really got to have the long extension in order to fit in there. Uh, that's on the bottom. But just kind of toggle it back and forth. I did try to fit a 3-8 socket in here. Just no bueno. Going to have to be a quarter inch. It's the only option. 
Uh, this intake manifold is a very long piece of aluminum. So I'm gonna remove the bolts in the same order that I would put them on in. I should say reverse order rather. I'm not just gonna randomly take one side and then the next. I'll start from the outside, work my way in, just as when I put it back in or on, I'll start from the inside and work my way out. Now at a minimum, you're gonna have to have at least a six inch extension. All right, let's see if we can't break this loose. Now, I'm not sure if they're all like this, but the injector harness was zip tied to the manifold. You can see the zip ties there. Just cut them off with the razor blade. Oh, there you go. So if you're doing this, uh, not sure if it's gonna be zip tied or not, so just make sure you have a knife or a razor blade with you. But aside from that, it's all pretty easy. You just have to have that weird socket with a super long extension in a quarter inch drive. Normally I'd get some shop towels and stuff these intake ports. We don't want anything going in there, of course, but I'm pulling the heads off anyway, so it doesn't really matter to me. Look how massive this looks. I mean, these are such long valve covers. You've got the five runners on each side, super cool. Can you imagine like a cross ram intake sitting on this or hell, even just velocity stacks on each port? Mm. This intake is iconic. I get it, looks cool. But this engine could look a lot cooler. Not sure I have the budget or time for it, but I'm not gonna let this go. I wanna kinda keep this, keep this in motion here. If you've got any ideas on what we could do with this, I'd love to hear them. But uh, this has a lot of potential. I don't think I'm gonna have a problem hitting 600 horsepower with this. That's in an NA form. All right, I do have the MS3 Evo Pro standalone computer. Obviously, you can do a lot of tuning, do some porting and polishing on the heads, but. Uh, I'm pretty excited to see this. I'm also really excited to hear this thing in the 69 Cuda, just sitting right over there, back in the garage, uh, hopefully in a matter of months. So let's see how this goes. Uh, if you haven't already, I really appreciate if you hit that subscribe button. Uh, I'm really excited about this build. It means a lot to me. And hopefully it'll be burning rubber on the streets before we know it.